but it's not it's not that the thing got better it's that the money got worse right so if you put money into bitcoin today and the money keeps getting worse then it's gonna go up and that's why i say all the time one bitcoin's one bitcoin will always be one bitcoin it'll be that two-bedroom house but the average person today feels priced out of the housing market but they can own bitcoin what's going to happen in my my opinion is the having is going to occur the fair mm -hmm. value is going to increase because that's yep. what happens when the having occurs the fair value goes up because the price needs to adjust to support the miners now in this cycle Mark Yusko is one of the most influential voices in the world of finance and cryptocurrencies. Yusko, the CEO of Morgan Creek Capital Management, is well known for his wisdom and insight, and he serves as a light of guidance for investors dealing with the choppy waters of Bitcoin and other investments. In light of the anticipation in the cryptocurrency community for the introduction of spot Bitcoin ETFs, Yusko's viewpoint is very important. Famous individuals such as Kathy Wood and Matt Hugon have been predicting the coming of these ETFs for some time, and Yusko joins the chorus of excitement. Yusko explores the ramifications of spot Bitcoin ETFs in an exclusive interview with Crypto Blood forecasting a dramatic change in the financial scene. As rumors circulate about tens of thousands of new investors possibly entering the market, Yusko clarifies his thoughts on how this may fundamentally change the cryptocurrency landscape. Come hear about Yusko's thoughts on Bitcoin ETFs, the current bull market, and his predictions for this thrilling cycle's future. Mark Yusko's viewpoint is one that has to be heard in a society where every word matters. I, I actually never felt that the ETF was for the big institutions, right? Doesn't mean that they wouldn't use it, but it's, the yeah. ETF it's for a retail, me- It's a retail product. Yeah, it, it's it's for the individual investor. And, and really what it was for was not the Robin Hood crowd and not mm -hmm. the, the meme coin traders and, and the day traders. It was for, again, it's, it's a boomer wrapper. It's for the mm -hmm. boomers whose money has been kind of abdicated to a financial advisor. And the financial advisor works at one of these big platforms, UBS, Merrill Lynch, et cetera. And that total dollars is about 30 odd trillion. It's a lot. And I kept saying that, look, once the ETF was approved, at a bare minimum, right away, 10 basis points was going in. So mm. that's, you know, about $30 billion. And we've had about half of that so far. And so that's pretty amazing. Now, mm -hmm. 10 basis points is not where it's gonna stay because Fidelity already said one to 3% in their kind of fund of funds ETF that allocates to other ETFs. They said, you know, one to three. And I think all these other places are gonna say, yeah, 1%, that, that's a good number. That's a good diversifier. Well, 1% of 30 trillion is 300 billion. That's more money than has ever gone into Bitcoin since day one. Just let that sink in for a second. 300 billion is more fiat than has ever been converted into Bitcoin. And yes, Bitcoin's market cap today is 1.3 trillion, but 1.3 trillion didn't go in. It was a very small fraction of that, somewhere in the 200 something billion uh, dollars and the rest is appreciation. What's going to happen, in my, my opinion, is the halving is going to occur. The mm -hmm. fair value is going to increase because that's yep. what happens when the halving occurs. The fair value goes up because the price needs to adjust to support the miners. Now, in this cycle, the fair value probably doesn't go up as much as previous cycles because we have this, ha this pre-halving event of the ETF which boosted the price closer to fair value so that most of the miners are, are doing okay right now. But, but the, the fair value is probably gonna go up to call it, you know, 75-ish K would be my estimate. In a normal cycle, then the leverage comes in and it pushes that to 2.3, 2.4 times. Well, there's not as much leverage now because, you know, they got rid of CZ at Binance, so that's not as much leverage. and they got rid of some of the old bad actors in terms of the leveraged lenders. So let's say we only go up two times fair value this time. 
So we go to 150-ish. Okay, well then what happens? Well then, when you're so far above fair value, that's when the short sellers are come in and, and, and some of the people say, okay, that's good enough for me, I'll take a little profit. My only point there is, I don't think the cyclicality is gone. I don't okay. think this is number go up in a straight line. I think we're gonna have peaks and we're gonna have troughs. And for a while, we're gonna make higher highs and higher lows. That's called accumulation, right? Mm -hmm. So there's gonna be an accumulation over the next year or so. Then when it gets too highly priced, there'll be distribution. The smart money, the people who bought early or some of the whales will start to distribute to the masses and then when it falls, they buy back. Mark has been looking forward, seeing the next bear market coming, which he believes will happen in late 2025. Though he was ahead of his time, we are still at the beginning of the present cycle. Given the brief delays brought on by ETFs and the usual course of a Bitcoin bull market, it might not seem that way. Unlike past cycles when such highs usually happened after halving, this year is the first time Bitcoin has risen to a new all-time high prior to its halves event. In addition, we expect more interruptions in the upcoming months. Let's go back to Mark's interview, where he discussed discusses certain signs that point to the possibility that this is the last big rise for Bitcoin. Is it the last big increase, like multiples? Kinda. And if you look, think about it, look, when it went from 0 0.003 cents mm -hmm. to a dollar, that was a miracle, right? That was the miracle of Bitcoin. Did it survive like the startup phase, the mm -hmm. science experiment, getting to a dollar? was the miracle. Right. Then running from a dollar to $10, birth. that's amazing, 10 times your money. But then it fell 80%. Then it went from two bucks to 300. Oh my gosh, 150 times. And then it fell to like 186 or something. Then it went to a thousand. And then it went back down to 200. And then it went to 20,000. And then it went back to 3,000. So <laughs> yep. going from a thousand to 20,000, just math, right? 20,000 20 times is a lot harder than 1,000 to 20,000. Right. And so from 68,000 to go up tenfold, but it's gonna take much longer. It won't be in this and, and look, people ask all the time, well, what's the ultimate end game? Well, let's just think about this. Bitcoin today is digital gold. Now, Michael mm -hmm. Saylor wants you to say it's digital property. Ultimately, I, I believe that, right? Okay, Today, it's yeah. digital gold. What is gold? Gold is money. Money is an asset that exists in the absence of a liability. Mm -hmm. Total, and this is where people make a mistake. They say, well, total market cap of gold is 12 trillion. So the equity market cap, we're going up 10X from here. Mm -mm. Half of that gold doesn't count. It's jewelry mm -hmm. and chalices right. and gold leaf on the golden dome, you know, back there at, at Notre <laughs> Dame. So no. So six trillion, that's five X from here in the bank, making five times your money from here in the bank. You can, you can call me on it. Okay. So that's like 400 K easy, easy. I mean like super easy, fine. Okay. But then beyond that digital property, now digital property, real estate is about an $86 trillion global asset class. Is it possible that Bitcoin is a better form of property. Like think about it, the American dream post-World War II was what? Everybody buys a house, white picket fence, we take a mortgage and we you know, make a ton of money. You bought a place in California when you came back from the war for 5,000 bucks, it's millions of dollars today, <laughs> glorious. Okay, what is that? That's just currency devaluation. The house right. didn't grow up, the house didn't right. grow. You didn't start with a two bedroom house and it turned into a 20 bedroom house. It's still a two bedroom house in the middle of a neighborhood that may yep. have deteriorated over 50 years. But it's not it's not that the thing got better, it's that the money got worse. Right. So right. if you put money into Bitcoin today and the money keeps getting worse, then it's gonna go up. And that's why I say all the time, one Bitcoin's one Bitcoin. Will always be one Bitcoin. It'll be that two bedroom house. But the average person today feels priced out of the housing market, but they can own Bitcoin. 
Mark Yusko offered an insightful critique during the conversation. He outlined the incredible trajectory of Bitcoin's price growth, highlighting significant turning points like the cryptocurrency's rise from pennies to dollars, then to $10, and then to astounding increases to $2,000, $300, and finally to $20,000. He pointed out that as the price increased, each increment become harder to make, highlighting the volatility and intricacy of the dynamics of the Bitcoin market. Yusko clarified Bitcoin's changing story by drawing a contrast between its potential as digital property and digital gold. Although Bitcoin is frequently compared to digital gold, Yusko offered a more comprehensive viewpoint that took into account its function as an improved form of property. He highlighted how currency depreciation over time has inflated property values, making real estate an increasingly unaffordable asset class for many, drawing comparisons to the American ideal of home ownership. Bitcoin, on the other hand, provides a hedge against currency depreciation and a different path for wealth generation and preservation. Yusko highlighted the potential of Bitcoin to upend established asset classes and enable anyone to take part in wealth creation globally by portraying it as a long-term store of value. He underlined how the value proposition of Bitcoin is ageless and that despite changes in its value measured in fiat currency, one Bitcoin would always remain one Bitcoin. Yusko's observations at the end of the video provoke contemplation about the wider ramifications of Bitcoin's development and its potential to be a game-changing asset class. Yusko's research is an effective catalyst for further investigation and comprehension of Bitcoin's influence on the financial environment, particularly when viewers reflect on the future of finance and asset preservation.